who's watched this market lately knows that we are totally hostage to the price of oil, even as for once the averages actually went down today when the price of crude went up. But that divergence is very much the exception, not the rule. Given that the oils, uh, that oil seems to be punching well above its weight in the stock market, I think it's imperative that we try to get the best understanding of the energy space we can possibly get. Now, we've already heard from Schlumberger and Halliburton this week, the two oil service titans, both of which imply that drilling budgets are starting to run dry at the exploration production companies. And that could mean that a crude uh, price might finally be bottoming, maybe even this year. And today we heard from Core Labs, CLB, which is known as the scientist of the oil patch because the company uses its technology to analyze rock and fluids in oil reservoirs so that its clients can find the best places and the best, uh, best ways to drill. Even though Core Labs' stock has fallen nearly 60% from its all-time highs, that was about two years ago, companies managed to remain profitable throughout the downturn. Now, Core Labs just reported at the close today the company delivered inline earnings slightly higher than expected revenues, although it still declined by 34.4% year-over-year. It is in the oil business. Meanwhile, management's guidance for the next quarter came in a fair bit below what some analysts were looking for. But you know what? It has shrunk its share count to an 18-year low, announced a large cash dividend of 55 cents per share, and doing a lot better than almost every other company I follow in this area. So let's take a closer look with David Dempster. He's the chairman and CEO of Core Labs. Find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Dempster, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having us back on Mad Money. Well, Dave, I got to tell you, I think in some ways you're the culprit. When I read through all the things you're doing technologically, I realize that the reason why drilling budgets have stayed, have been able to produce far more oil than they used to is because they've hired you to find out where the sweet spots are, and you are the optimization that they need to be able to get those drilling budgets to produce the most oil. Absolutely correct, Jim. Remember, uh, our mission is to help our clients produce more oil and gas every day, but more importantly, to produce more oil and gas from the assets they have. On average, if you look at some of these unconventional plays, the recovery factors are still around 9 to 10%. We believe that over time we can get that up to 12, 13, maybe as much as 15 percent. So although we'll see lower drilling activity, we might see higher productivity from the clients that use core laboratories. I felt it was really there was a line in your uh, in your your always you guys are so transparent. I love it. But you said in spite of the volatility in the oil industry during the fourth quarter of 2015, you were able to maintain a steady, albeit lower stream of sales for your studies, which were from private equity-backed companies. So there is still money waiting in the wings when these companies that are currently trading get challenged. That's right, Jim. Actually, private equity is playing a large role now in these unconventional plays in North America. And we have large databases available to them for a million or two million dollars. They can get a plethora of data understand the acreage very quickly and then find the sweet spots where, where they would want to collect acreage that they can accumulate now for some companies that might have struggling balance sheets. Wow, that's important because a lot of people are saying, when is the cavalry going to come? We don't know. Now, David, you were very spot on in saying that, that onshore could decline. Obviously, you don't control Gulf of Mexico. A lot of, play, a lot of projects came on stream. They kind of made it so we produced a little more than we thought. But you, when you were on last, you thought that maybe the Saudis would eventually kind of stop over pumping, so to speak. It looks like to me that we've been falling more because the Saudis have been acting a lot. I think maybe that they have a lot more oil than we realize, and they can pump a lot faster than we thought. Well, they're down about 300,000 barrels from six months ago. So they are down a little bit, but it's just they're still pumping at pretty much maximum rates. When we look at the decline curves worldwide at core laboratories, we increased that from about 2.5% net last year at this time. We increased that to 3.1% net. So on an $85 million worldwide production base, next year at this time, we have to produce 2.6 million new barrels to take the place of what the decline curve will take away from us. We find the globe having a very difficult time to do that, and that's why we see crude oil markets balancing in the second half of 2016. Continued falls here in the U.S., mm -hmm. and then also internationally we'll see decreases in production as well. All right, now, David, you, Slumberjay did it, but you laid it out even better. I love it, not to denigrate the guys of Slob. We know that they're fabulous. But you point blank put the lie to the idea that the reason why oil is going down is because demand's getting weaker. I just need you to tell our audience how specifically you feel that way because it's so laid out well in your release. 
Yeah, if you look at it, Jim, a lot of the news flashes that are coming out of China are all suggesting that that economy is slowing and their ability to increase their crude oil uh, consumption is going down. That's not correct. If you look at the numbers in the fourth quarter, you will see strong demand increases in China and probably continuing into 2016. So on the demand side, we feel pretty good about a 1.2 million barrel a day gain in demand as per the IAA numbers as well. Over the demand that we had this year, uh, last year at 2015 of 1.7 million. Okay. So you put on the demand of 1.2 million, a decline curve of 2.6 million worldwide, and you can pretty quickly get crude oil markets to balance in the second half of, of this year. All right. Well, if I listen to that, I wanna, what I want to try to do is take off the table the uh, January to March 1986 scenario where oil was at 26 and it went down to 10. You were in the business. Could that happen again somehow? It just can't happen, Jim. Back then, if we looked at the overcapacity that was around the globe, it was about 10 to 12 million barrels. Today, the spare capacity in the world is probably nearer to one or maybe less than that. So without that spare capacity there, when demand starts to bump up against supply, you're going to have a reaction in price. Up prices go and up go worldwide activity for companies like Core Laboratories. A lot of the companies in your industry are figuring out how to be able to preserve, if not cut their dividend wholly, and certainly have gotten away from your buyback. That's not been your style, has it? No, it's not, Jim. And, you know, good companies increase their dividends. So stay tuned for later this year. We'll see what we can do about that. All right. You are a good company, and you have kept us very straight on this issue. David Dempster, Chairman, President, CEO of Core Labs. Great to see you, sir. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having us back on Mad Money. Look, uh, it's a tough group, but there are certain companies that really know what they're doing, and Core Labs is one of them. Stay with me. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.